Hey guys, it's Janice and, and, Abby and Abigail from Ozark Family Homestead. And it is a muddy mess outside, but it is springtime. And we thought we'd walk around our homestead and show everybody what is growing around here at the end of April. So like I said, we've gotten a good rain and it's muddy. We've got our muck boots on and we're gonna trudge through some sloppy, muddy mess to go show you these things. Uh, for those of you that are new around here, we are in the Missouri Ozarks. We are in, we were zone 6B, but the USDA just updated us to zone 7A. So for what it's worth, that's where we're at. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around and show you what's growing around here. So here we go. Okay, there goes Lady Dog. She says, love on me. Well, the first thing are my hostas. I love my hostas. It is shady here in the front yard. It stays shady and pretty moist and cool with these trees here. So the hostas do great. This little bare spot here, we thought we'd lost it, but Abigail, show them. The little one, it's coming back. So we may have another hosta coming back in there after all. I do have several different varieties and apparently these are edible. The internet tells me that these are edible. Now we've never eaten them ourselves. So I've got a few more over here around each of the trees and we've got the chicken wire here just to keep the chickens from tearing everything up. I do have big plans to redo all this here in the front yard. I've got some mulch bought and some prettier fencing. So it's on the to-do list, guys. Here are some little starts that Sarah plans on offering to some other local ladies. There's some cabbage and broccoli and chamomile and I think snapdragons. So, got ducks hanging out over here. I'll go ahead and show you noisy birds outside too. Other hostas right over there. And then the last ones are over here around this tree here. There we go. Like I said, we'll do some cleanup, add some mulch, trim these things coming up. They're out of the ground. Okay. You ready to head over to the herb garden? Uh -huh. All right. Okay, over here where we have the rock wall with the herb garden in it, I do have some mint growing here in these pots here. It just comes back every year, but mint is very invasive, so keeping it in a pot keeps it from going everywhere. The veggie gob bed that uh, we were given by a sponsor, we've not filled it up yet, but it is a um, another thing on the to-do list. So, and here's the peppermint. The first pot was spearmint, and this one is peppermint right here. We enjoy that in teas. Okay, over here is all the oregano. This is all oregano here growing in the herb garden. And I wish you guys could smell it because it smells good. And once these things are gone, we had uh, daffodils growing in here and this is a big allium plant. So once these are gone, as you can see, it's getting ready to have a big flower up here on top. Once those are gone, we'll have more room for the oregano to spread. And hidden down in here is some sage. That is sage right there, like for sausage seasoning. So a big bumblebee just flew past my ear. <laughs> but this is more oregano down here. It just spreads all through here. There's even a little bit of cilantro that has popped up from last year. And I'm thinking this is probably chamomile here as well. So. Okay, we'll scoot around to the old orchard at this point. She's hiding under the lilac bush. <laughs> All right, coming back here to the old orchard, we start off, this is a small pecan tree that we planted many years ago, more than, more than 10 years ago. Um, nut trees just grow so, so slowly. So, but eventually this one will get big enough and actually produce some nuts for us. Um, this one right here, right there, that is a pecan tree also. So it is a soft shell pecan. Then the old orchard area, for those of you that are new, this is called the old orchard because the original homeowner 
that built up this homestead originally tried to plant an orchard here. It didn't do as well, so he did move it to an area that we call the new orchard, and I'll take you down there here in a little bit too. But over in this area, we've got some uh, pear trees over there. Let me see. Usually the pears put on fruit last. And Abigail, do you see any little bitty, little bitty teeny tiny baby pears? Um, I don't see any yet, but that's not uncommon. So pear trees there, apple trees here, and we have another apple tree right here. That's a pear tree. Let me look here. I know this apple tree does have little baby apples. Right here. Yeah, let's show everybody here. what it's they look like. Oh. And they'll just get bigger and bigger and turn into apples that we can harvest and eat. Now we've expanded the old orchard this year. Um, Miss Erin gifted us with some funds to buy some extra trees because the, oh, there went a bunny. I don't know if you guys saw it. <laughs> Just took off over there through the trees. Um, the original developer of our homestead, we lost him earlier this spring. He passed away and he was very important to us. So in his memory, we now have all these apple trees planted here in the old orchard. There's five trees along this new row here. So at this point, we'll move on to the new orchard. Oh, there is one more pecan tree here on this side too, just as small as the other one, but we give it time. You see it in there? We just saw a little skink slither out of there, a small little lizard, but in here with this, um, Oh, this cage we've got, this tomato cage we've got around this is protecting a fig plant, which is small. Can you point to the leaves there? Just show everybody that's the fig. This one over here is bigger. So we do have that one. And then we have this one too. Where is it? There you go. So fig plants there. And we'll keep going on down to the new orchard. There's a bird hopping around in there. That's what she sees. We heard something scuffling around in there. Okay, Sean and Andrew have the lawnmower out. They're taking water to the animals, getting a head start on some evening chores. This area right here has black raspberries. They just, they grow like weeds and they reroot because originally this plant right here was planted over here by this white lattice work and it has just expanded out into this part of the yard. I would say of all the berries that we grow, the black raspberries are my favorite. Now we definitely need to do some maintenance over here and clean up, but uh, looking forward to these berries here soon. Okay, coming into the new orchard now. I had three pawpaw trees planted right here in a row. And you can see this one here is already leafed out. We have them protected some from the chickens as well. When chickens free range, it's great. But, uh, oh, it is still alive. Look at that, I thought I'd lost this one. See, it goes all the way up to here and uh, there's no leaves. I thought I'd lost it. But look there's there. Leaves. There are leaves, how about that? So I do have three pawpaw trees still. And this is the biggest one. It actually flowered this year too. So obviously we're not going to get harvest off of this yet, but one of these days, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then some grape vines through here. These are smaller ones that we have had to replace. Every spring we have to go through and see what has survived and what hasn't. So some grape vines, um, this, some hazelnut bushes here that we've never really gotten to harvest anything from. The asparagus patch is right over here. Just bring in a little bit of asparagus every day. These ferns are the ones that they're actually, I guess you could kind of say they're going to seed. They're just getting ready to uh, make next year's crop go. So that's the asparagus patch. 
Um, let me go ahead and bring you over here. This is our garlic patch. I know it looks like a bunch of weeds, but a lot of this here, this is garlic in there growing. So we have all of this just full of garlic and we'll start, we'll get a harvest of garlic scapes off it first before we actually harvest the, you know, garlic. You found a pretty flower. Mm -hmm. She likes to give me flowers and has me put them in my hair. Can we put it in my hair? There we go. I'll stick it in there. Yep. I don't know if you could see the lawnmower over there. They are taking water to animals. Okay, we'll keep showing everybody the fruit trees. Oh, did you hear that? That was thunder. Well, he got clouds everywhere. We got a storm coming. We'll just move on here. Scooting on. <laughs> Some fruit trees here. And I would say of everything on our property, the orchard, it's the hardest for me because I don't trust myself to prune our trees properly. It, it's overwhelming for me. So let's see, we've got several different varieties in here. This is a plum. This is a new one that we've planted this year. Um, some plum and apricot. These are apple. And I have noticed very few of our apple trees actually have baby apples on them this year. These just, they don't look right. So this is an apple tree and that doesn't look right. So I don't know if a late frost got them. This one has baby apples on it too. So yeah, very few, but they're there. So the apple harvest this year is not looking very promising. I, I sound and it was the same way with the peaches also, baby. I went and looked and I couldn't see too many peaches. <laughs> so, I can hear all the animals, the sheep and the goats going crazy. So they know it's feeding time. So those are grapes. They're in these little circle patches here. Oh, I've got to tie this one up still. Yep, let's look in here. Little teeny tiny baby clusters of grapes there. I do, I need to get the... Um, twine and secure it to this wire here. That's one of my jobs every year. Yeah. There we go. So we do have some grapes. And then these are some smaller apple trees through here that are new. Oh, those noisy goats. You like the little baby grapes, don't you? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's neat. We just have to keep the birds from eating them. Yeah. That's the tricky part. So I just eat them. And then one more here. <laughs> so, okay, let me come down here. I'm going to look at the peach trees and just see if we actually have any little baby peaches. See this apple tree. Do you see any baby apples? I do not. Well, there's, there's a Teeny tiny. Well, maybe. Maybe we'll get something there. We'll see. This be hmm. Okay. Peach tree. This is a volunteer peach tree. The original homeowner had his compost pile set up right here. And when we moved here to the property 14 years ago, there was this small little peach tree coming up out of the ground here where his compost pile used to be. Well, here is a little, little bitty peach. Let me get up here and see. Right there. Little bitty peach, but there's not many. I don't see nothing over So, here. fruit harvest may not go well. More peach trees over here. Oh, I just hate that. Oh, here's, here's a couple. Not much. So... I don't know guys, but one more peach tree there. Okay, let's head on into, how about we just go into the main garden and see what we can see. Or no, let's go down and look at the um, blackberries and stuff and then we'll go to the main garden. There's a plan. Okay, now the blackberries. So we do have thornless blackberries through this fence row here. It's overgrown, but there are well, there's noisy goats on the other side of the fence. Okay. <laughs> and then we've got these blackberry canes just randomly through here. 
Let me see. Where are they at? Cleaning up the fence row is just always an issue. This is our persimmon tree. No baby. Yeah, I don't see any baby persimmons on there just yet. But it get, always gives us a good harvest in the fall. Watch out for poison ivy, baby. There is poison ivy in there. Let's see. Where are... Here's an old blackberry cane here. Where are they at? Oh, down under there. I can see them down under. Mixed in with poison ivy. That's lovely. Yeah, yeah I am very, very sensitive to poison ivy. So, do not want to get close to that in any way, shape, or form. And in here is blackberry amongst the poison ivy. Yay. I know. That's awful. Okay, let me see if our raspberries came back. Okay, oh, I do see a... How about that? I do see a raspberry. We do awful with raspberries, guys. But right down here in this mulch, that is a raspberry plant. How about that? I'm about to buy some more. We have a local lady offering some raspberry starts just for $2.50 a piece. So I think I may take her up on that. Are you being a country girl? <laughs> You're goopy. So yeah, I may take her up on that and see if I can try once again and reestablish something, but we'll see. Our poison ivy patch is doing great though, you guys. <laughs> There's those noisy goats through there with Daisy the cow. Okay, placed a few of the boy goats in here to clean up some of the things that Daisy doesn't want to eat. And these are the noisemakers. Whenever they hear that lawnmower start up, they know that means good things for them. So, got Rosie the dog. She's their protector. And right over here is Daisy. And that's her calf, Spruce, hanging out with her there. Spruce is her little heifer calf. So, they're sweet girls. Rosie, are you a sweet girl? She says, yes, I'm a sweet girl. Okay, right through here, this is a potato patch that's hilled up. Potatoes are in here, and they are popping up. Of course, we're not doing much in there because um, of all the rain. But there are little green sprouts popping up there in the dirt. And once it dries out, then we will need to get in there and redo the hills. So it'll look nice and neat and tidy. We are using the woven weed fabric. Miss Lisa sent us a whole bunch of this and it is gonna be a big blessing, especially this summer when everything just grows like crazy. Are you making friends? Uh-huh. Yep. Said, oh, you're such a good friend. Don't fight now. Be not, oh, you boys. You ornery boys, you be nice. Listen, but this is what boy goats do. They just fight. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Maybe they're playing. Fight. Yes, they're a mess. They're friends. They've been living together for months now. <laughs> okay, let me take you on out to this garden real quick and show you what's going on in here. Um, these two fence rows here have peas growing up them. Hope you can see some of them here are flowering. So, <laughs> he's back talking me. So, we've got peas growing up through there. And then, let's see if you can see, there's some newspaper here with some rocks on it. And through those are the brassicas. This is where the cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and it goes all the way down. Let me see if I can zoom in. If you can see some yellow flowers down there at the end, those are still brassicas down there. And uh, they're trying to bolt, actually, because it's gotten so warm here lately. Okay, I've just moved around to the back side of the greenhouse here. You can still see daisies in the same spot, uh, getting some grass. 
uh, Sarah has dug up a few sunflowers. These are volunteer sunflowers that she's found growing here and there in this back part of the second garden. This is not the main garden. This is our secondary space and there's nothing planted in here yet. The weed fabric is getting in place and uh, grass is getting cut down, but this is gonna be for corn, for melons, both cantaloupe and watermelon and pumpkin and uh, sunflowers will be out here again too. So, but nothing in the ground just yet on this. Got some more sunflowers right there where all those flags are. So this will be full of stuff soon. Okay, back around here to the greenhouse. It is still mostly empty. We've got some potting soil and stuff stacked up in here. Uh, tomato plants are in here along with pepper plants. So that's all that we have going on here. Sarah went, uh, went a little wild with tomato plants this year. So hopefully we are a tomato farm by the end of the growing season. And then she's just got a few little odds and ends. I think those are sunflowers in there just on hold until she finds an actual home for all these things. So there's that. And then um, here's some peppers, more tomatoes <laughs> and basil. We had a great basil patch last year. Cherry tomatoes down here. She says pineapple tomato there, a gooseberry cherry tomato, mortgage lifters, beef steaks. There's just all kinds of stuff. There's little things inside here. We use these old salad containers as like miniature greenhouses. So more things down in here. You can you see them in there? I'm trying to hit the lid here, growing so fast. Oh, looks like more cilantro down here too. Ella Campaign, medicinal herb, that has to be put out as well. This right here was called winter sowing and uh, looks like she's brought these in and opened them up because the plants are getting so big. That's where through the winter, January and February, seeds are planted in milk jugs and juice jugs and they're used as miniature greenhouses. They are set outside and the plants grow in there. So these are in process of being put in their final homes. Okay, Abigail's telling me that there may be peaches back here on more. We've got more volunteer peach trees back here where more of the goats and the turkeys and some ducks are. Let's see if I can keep an eye out. There's a mama duck out here with five little baby ducklings that she hatched out. There she is. Let's see. Let's see if you guys can see her. She is a protective mama. There we go. She's coming this way. If I get too close, she'll run off. So I'm just gonna stand here and zoom in and we'll see if you guys can see. These were just, we just found them yesterday. So she's got five little babies and she is being a good, good mama. She does not um, want anybody close to her. Do you see those babies? No. <laughs> Um, that's the mama. Oh. That is the mama. Maybe. Yeah, the daddy duck. Yeah, we're gonna look at the peaches there too, baby. There's a lot. So yeah, there's the turkeys making noises through there, and some goats. <laughs> so. Okay, let me see. Yes, they like those peach leaves, don't they? Don't. Let's see. Where's the little baby peaches growing at over here? One hiding. Oh, those are bigger too, aren't they? Here, let me get it. There we go. In there. These look better. And there's one right here. That's awesome. Okay, we need to keep the chickens out of here. Okay, so these trees should not be here. First of all, this is along this fence row. This is not an ideal place for fruit trees. But again, just like that other one over there at the uh, original owner's old compost pile, these were not planted here by people. Animals put the peach pits there. And so we have, oh, there's the thunder. Do you hear the thunder? Oh, you okay, baby? Yeah, it's okay. Hmm, it's gonna be nighttime. There's one, two, 
three peach trees right through here. Those goats watched you fall down. <laughs> Did you feel a raindrop? Okay, let's hurry up to the main garden then. Before we leave, I want to make sure Miss Florence sees where we posted the beware of the chickens plate that she sent us. <laughs> Oh, look, guys. Okay, last time I looked at these apple trees, there were no baby apples on here. But look, can you see them? Oh, and there's a bunch. Okay, this is good. This is good, guys. What we have found is that some of the trees take turns over the years. They'll have a bumper crop and then nothing. And they kind of flip-flop. So, oh, that's awesome. These three trees over here in the side orchard, they do typically do well. They're, they're pretty stable for us. Okay, the second tree, I do see some. Not as many as that first one, but yep, there are some in there. And the third tree down here. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, well, we may get some apples after all. Good deal. And then we have black walnut on the other side of the fence over there in the goat pen. There are black walnut trees over there with these goats. You like that up there? Yes. Yeah, it looks good. It is cute, cute. Um, this is one of my clematis plants here growing up. So should have pretty, yeah, there's buds. Should have pretty purple flowers on it soon. We'll go on inside. Okay, now inside the garden, um, it's still early in the season, so we don't have a ton out here, but I do have some comfrey in these pots, lobelia for medicinal purposes in here, elderberry right over there in that pot, and then all of these raised beds all along here have blueberry plants growing in them, a lot of them small, because we've just put them in, but that's what's in there. If I walk down here, we have a rogue sunflower that came back from last year. Growing up through here, I've got some cleavers, which are really an invasive weed, but they are medicinal as well, so they stick to you. I don't know if it sticks to me, so, but it is medicinal as well, so we could harvest some of that. And then, oh baby, I'm glad you have your mud boots on. Look at that. It is a muddy mess. I'm staying on the path. I've got my mud boots on too, but I don't particularly want to walk through it. So, lavender and chamomile. There's rosemary back here. These will be transplanted into that veggie gah garden bed once we get it topped off. Snapdragons. So there's a row strawberry plant in there that I probably need to divide. All the pots here, we've got lettuces, kale, different kinds of kale, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and green onions. This I think is some calendula down here, which is also medicinal. So just a variety of things we've separated the strawberry plants and I've tried to divide them up because they were all in one pot and that was just way too much so and some things are bolting they're going to seed there but we'll just get more seed for planting next year you can see these are the little seed pods right here so those things are going to seed as well um, some older beets and stuff in there and probably some carrots mixed in there too. But I like the way the potato patch is looking right now. Those were planted first. And then these other ones, just like that second potato patch that I showed you back in the back by Daisy. These also have little, the green sprouts are coming up. If you can see them there, this one's bigger. So they are up. We just haven't held them well like we have these because these were brand new before all the rains came and made things a mess here's another potato patch through here if you can see tomatoes yep 
They've popped up since all the rain, haven't they? You know what we're going to be doing out here when it dries out? <laughs> we're going to be hilling potatoes. Making those rows pretty. Oh, baby, it's a muddy mess. So we'll walk, walk around the other way to show everybody the celery. Okay, if you can see through here, this was mostly kale. And we should have a tremendous amount of kale seeds. <laughs> All those little pods there that you see will be full of seeds. So once you buy kale seeds for the first time, you should never <laughs> have to buy seeds ever again. There are some rogue uh, garlic. This is some garlic in here because this was the garlic bed last year. But yeah, everything's bolting and going to seed through here. Her jet going over. Let's go down here and I'll show everybody the celery. I can't see, the you can't see it because it's so cloudy, but it's loud, isn't it? You gonna take a big bite out of that? Nope. Nope. I'm gonna make a whip out of it. You're gonna make a whip out of it. How about that? Okay. This needs to be weeded, but right here celery this has been in here since the fall this made it all winter long out here you can see this celery plant is beginning to bolt oh that's a noisy jet and this one's still doing good so we can still harvest yeah this one's going to bolt also but surprisingly the celery did very well out here for us this year this is the other side of that potato patch. So we still have lots of spaces in the garden to clean up and fill up with all the things. Okay, coming back around to the front yard, we've got some irises blooming. The yucca plants are putting up their flowering stalks as well. And these towers here uh, were loaded with green onions. So, <laughs> If any of you saw my spice cabinet video with the jar labeled frog toenails, that was my children being funny when we dehydrated the green onion tops. So, oh, and she's got other plants in here too. I didn't realize she had put other plants in here. Surprise, surprise. I'm not sure what this is exactly. And do you know this is mullein over here. This is another medicinal herb that our family uses for, well, we use it for ear aches and um, stuff like that. So, um, also have echinacea coming up right here. So, just some flocks, lots of mullein growing through here, and they're going to get really big plants here before too long. They're supposed to be zinnias, but I know Sarah thinks that the chickens may have scratched those seeds up and eaten them. And then usually some yarrow. So, and what were these? Hollyhocks, I believe. She says she has growing in here as well. All right, in here we have some calendula. My lemon balm did not come back. This pot has been lemon balm for years now, and I see no evidence of it coming back. So I'm going to get some. I have some local ladies that are willing to share some of theirs with me. Yeah, I like my little, my little cheeky chick, but it's a big one. So more calendula, and then I've got some whorehound growing here. This is medicinal, as well as some thyme. All right, guys, that's it. I think we're about to get some more rain, so I'm going to try to hurry up here. If you like the video, thumbs up, please, please. Make sure you are subscribed, and tell others about Ozark Family Homestead so our channel can grow. Please and thank you. Guys, I will see you on the next video. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Ozark Family Homestead.